so the, the, the fall, and we're also supposed to, that's supposed to correlate and tie in with the third seal of Revelation, the black horse, which will mean death. So I would suspect because it's a black horse, we're going to see um, a large amount of deaths here in the year of Jubilee. And I would suspect the deaths are going to be directly related to the, yep. that everybody's been, been getting. That, so that's a black horse implying death. So don't be surprised in the next 12 months, we see, you know, many deaths. Um, and then the black horse was also carrying scales. Well, the scales of financial rebalancing as we move from one kingdom of paper to the to God's money, gold and silver. So the money system will rebalance uh, in the so it's a third seal event, all tied in with the fall of Daniel, Daniel two prophecy. What was the uh, seven 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 days again on that chart? So the seven 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 days is interesting because if you look, um, so the first one, if you look at the far left side, the, the yellow. Uh, November 8th was when Trump got elected. Mm -hmm. um, 777 days from when he got elected to the exact day the stock market crashed at the very bottom. And that, that was Christmas Eve. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that? Remember that in 2018, December 24th? Yeah. And then Trump came out the next day and he made an announcement and the stock market started going back up again. So it was exactly 777 days from when he got elected to the bottom of the first crash, wow. to the precise date. That's amazing. So now the second 777 cycle uh, takes us to June 7th of 2022. My cycles point to a big crash coming next year um, around that time point. In that time window, we've got a potential big, big um, market crash coming as well. So will it tie in with that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you the calculations, but the last time that was the bottom of, of, of the market crash. Um, and so we're in the year of Jubilee. We're stepping into the kingdom economy, economy backed by gold and silver. Gold and silver will be the monetary instrument um, you know, moving forward in the new kingdom. Uh, we're still going to have two money systems, but one is dying right. and then one is rising. And that's that's and so basically we we have these two systems uh, you know the, the wheat and the tares right. in a nutshell yeah. so that's what we're seeing. Page eleven: The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to bring the He has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that the captives will be released and the prisoners will be freed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's the year of jubilee. Yep. Okay, the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God. So that's when we go back to, again, we're waiting. There's a day. That's the day that's like equivalent to the Saul Paul moment. That's equivalent to the Red Sea moment. That's equivalent to the um, Great Flood. It's just a moment in time where everything shifts. And that moment in time is hidden because that moment in time is equivalent also to the arrival of Christ back on earth. And that's a secret. No one knows the day. And this is four times in the Bible. No one knows the day. And no one knows the hour. Right. It's not no one knows the season. No one knows the year. It's, it's no one knows the day or the hour. So just like right now, I don't know. I have no clue what day or what hour the glory um, of the vengeance, you know, God will arrive to, to bring his vengeance upon the earth. Because the vengeance is mine, say it, the Lord. Right. This is not, you know, for, it's for us to pray. But it's not for us to bring vengeance to these people, what they're doing. The day of vengeance is coming. But that day of vengeance, I believe, is the trigger for the year of Jubilee, mm -hmm. if, if that's, you know, and that directly ties in with, with scripture. I think I had this on the last presentation I had with you on page 12, David, maybe I didn't, but remember the, um, the center of time, center of end times, May, May 26th, that's on the right side of the page in blue, if you see that. So I, I got this prophetically a couple weeks ago, and I know this is accurate because of what already had just happened. That's why I emailed you the other day, you know, how August 24th, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, right. what happened? August? But okay, please understand, I have no clue on events. I do, I'm an analyst of time. I'm not an analyst of events. I'm not a prophet to tell you what's, you know, God, you know, what's going to happen. But but I do, do know that prophetically, I'm getting dates and times and how to calculate it. And so uh, from May 26th, God, you know, it's, it's a protractor. He you know, showed me a protractor. He goes, every angle is a day. Every degree is a day. So if you take it up, you get to 40 degrees. Well, 40 degrees took us to, to July 4th. How cool is this? So you got Hank Kuhneman 
at the Grand Ole Opry, Nashville, stating, something grand is taking place. Let there be a new sound, a shift to this nation now. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord upon America and 45. So that was 40 degrees, 40 days, July 4th. Then it gets pretty crazy because we start heading into, um, there's what's called a Nixon moment. So those who don't know of your viewers, but in 1971, August 15th, Nixon detached the convertibility of gold into the dollar. So basically, other nations were trying to get all the U.S.'s gold, so he cut it off. And that was shut down on August 15th. Kabul fell 50 years to the day, August 15th. Wow. Okay, that was the marker number one. Why would that happen 50 years to the mark except that it's prophetic, and now, but this is the crazy part, okay? You go all the way up and get to 90 degrees. So if, if, so if, if you're at 90 degrees, when do you start to tip, David? At 91 degrees, right? So yep. 90 to 91 degrees is tipping point. So on August 24th, Russia and Saudi Arabia sign a military pact. People say, why is that important? You have to think about it. For 50 or 48 years, uh, the agreement that the United States had with Saudi Arabia particularly was... We will give you protection and you buy our bonds for the oil. That was a deal. That was, in essence, the deal. This has been going on forever. That's why any and all countries go back in the past, Gaddafi, uh, 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 Iraq, all these countries that have tried to sell oil in another denomination other than the U.S. dollar. Oh, well, they're terrorists, so we're going to go invade them. Every single nation has fallen, but now they've got a huge problem. They got the bear, the 800 pound, I call it 800, the 800 pound gorilla. Let's call it 800 pound bear. It's called Russia. They got the grizzly. This is the first time in history that the United States, to protect their dollar, have to go against a superpower. Hmm. How's that going to end, David? So this is the problem. So this will be the fall of the US dollar. And then now will be the fall of the United States. The administration that's in right now, no one has any faith in them, right? So look what's going on. That event particularly happened. That contract was signed after 50 years with a superpower. Why would Saudi Arabia do that? Because it's a contract, right? Well, look what it's gonna happen just a thousand miles away. No protection there. So, like, wait a second. So, you're going to protect us? I don't think so. Right. They just want protection. And if you, I don't know if you've been to Dubai recently, David, but that country is wealthy. Those buildings are insane. Yeah. There is so much money there. You don't think they want to protect that stuff? Okay. So, they sign a contract and the deal with Russia. I don't know the deal. No one knows the, the inner workings of the deal. But wouldn't it make sense that in Russia deals in rubles, that maybe they might be buying that oil for? another denomination, mm -hmm. maybe for gold, maybe for rubles, who the heck knows? But I promise you, I will tell, I bet you, I bet you a hundred bucks, David, that's not for the U.S. dollar. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the problem. They got the grizzly to deal with. So, and that event was at tipping point to the mark. So now the little black arrow there says September 2nd, that's today. We're literally four days away from the start of Jubilee, mm -hmm. from Rosh Hashanah, the start of the 50th year. So what happens next four days? I don't know. Does it happen to maybe the 10 days of all? I don't know. I'm just telling you that September 6th is a very important date. Yeah. But also the day before that is a little 29. Is that important? I don't know. Historically, it's been, right? All I'm saying is that we're at a point now where it's just couldn't be more tight with regards to time. And the glory only needs an hour, a day. I don't know, but it's pretty quick. Very quick. As, as you know. And so that takes us the protractor, right? So now, you know, with September 22nd, that's, that's 120 days. And then we continue the green line all the way to November 22nd. Basically, if you look at that, you're basically flat on your face. So which means Goliath would have fallen flat on his face by November 22nd. It's 180 days. Hmm. Or does it take the maximum would be another 90 degrees, would be 270 degrees, would be February 20th of 20. But I promise you by February, Goliath is flat on his face. The bond market's broken. Um, and I believe 
that just insanity is going to be here by the time of November, because that's just a 90 degree time. That's a massive tipping point at November 22nd. And so what God showed me, this is, if you go to, over to page 15, I think you're going to love this. This summarizes page 15, David, everything in a nutshell that I've really gotten that I want, I'd like your viewers to see and understand. So think of November as like the critical month. It's 1-1. One, one. Last year, November, we had an election. The United States over the past decade has been infiltrated. You know that? Yep. By communists. Okay. And so it's, it's the infiltration is everywhere. They've been working on this for a long time. And finally, their plan worked according to what they tried to pull off. Okay. We went left. The United States went left. It's a fork in the road. The United States was supposed to go right and continue the covenant. We went left. And we broke the covenant. We broke the covenant of 1776. The Declaration of Independence. So let me read this to you because this is really awesome. A covenant is in its simplest form, David. It's a promise. But here's the best part. A biblical covenant is a promise of man and God. You know the covenant with Israel, right? Yep. Has, ever, has Israel ever fallen, David? No. Nope. It always comes back to life, yep. right? So let me read this. A biblical covenant is an unconditional, permanent promise. And the promising parties must keep their promise regardless of the other party's breach of their promise. So the other party can breach. We just breached, okay? And is enforceable by God. The 1776 Declaration of Independence was a biblical covenant, a promise by the founding fathers to God that all men are created equal. And in return, God promised to bless the United States, and the United States was born the greatest nation in the world. Hmm. Right now, all men are not created equal, David. Right. The, the powers of separation, you got trillionaires, billion, multi-billionaires, and people living on the streets. There is nothing of equivalent, you know, the, the political, the governments don't work for us. They work for themselves. You know, it's not for the people that work for themselves. The whole thing is just upside down. So the promise was binding. However, in November of last year, 2020, we, the people allowed our election to be infiltrated by godless communist foreign power. And God thus removed his blessing for a season. For breach of contract. A season in this sense is not three months. It's a whole circle of 360 degrees. So if you start at November and you make a circle, where does that take you back to? November of 2021. For one entire season, God gave the world a taste of what communism is all about, of what People, government controlling you is all about what evil is all about. And now we're about to head back into November. Daniel 2, the fall of the image. Third seal of revelation, the financial rebalancing. All of the, these are two events that are going down in the next 12 months. And we're stepping into it all by November. So by November, Goliath has fallen flat on his face, and guess which direction the United States goes in November, David? It goes right into the new era. So that we go back to the fork in the road. It's a backtrack. We screwed up. We go back to November, and now we're going to go in the correct direction. So starting in November, we're going to go in the correct direction, and we're going to head into the new era. And that's how this is going to play out. So it's, we are, you know, days away from, from um, Rosh Hashanah. We are just two and a half months or three months, it, uh, September, October, November 22nd. So maybe two and a half-ish months to November 22nd. Um, all I can tell you is if there was ever a point in time where just the most powerful events in his, human history, you know, could and should unfold, we're, we're, we're at the doorstep here, David, and it's, and, and it's really exciting. I got this from a viewer, uh, one of my viewers yesterday, on page 14. This prophecy, David, 
was from nine years ago Hmm. on Sid Roth. And you will love it because it directly ties into what I'm talking about today. So the prophecy of nine years ago is about to happen. Approximately a year or so ago, I was uh, sitting on the couch. I thought I had fallen asleep when in reality, I was in a vision, an open vision. I have a large screen television in my living room. I was sitting on the couch watching television. And again, I thought I was dreaming. As I watched, there was a, a weather broadcast that was on television. And there was a news anchor who said, the most amazing thing is going on right now. It's tragic, it's tragic. And they were building this, this news broadcast around this event. And they, uh, he said, normally hurricanes hit on the coastal lines. He said, but there is a hurricane that seems to be spreading down or, or coming across the heartland of America. At that point, he showed a satellite image of America. And I was horrified as I watched a storm covering the north, from the northern border to the southern border from east to west as this massive storm with the eye right over the center of America, a hurricane coming across the center of America. This news reporter in the eye of the storm, as you would see in a hurricane, there, the wind is blowing violently and they're being tossed to and fro. He said, this is the most amazing thing. I don't understand it. This is not a natural storm. That was his words. He said, this isn't normal. He said, look at what it's raining. And he reached down on the ground and he's picking up and he holds in his hand a fist of $1 bills. He said, this isn't, this isn't natural. It's raining dollar bills. And the anchor and this correspondent went back and forth about the meaning of this dollar bills. He said, I don't understand. It's almost like they're worthless. They're worthless. It was raining dollars. About that time it came back to the anchor. He said, ladies and gentlemen, another tragedy has hit America. He said, right in the heartland of America on the New Madrid Fault, a major earthquake has just hit and immediately pictures of devastation began to pop up all over America, the heartland of America along the New Madrid Fault as earthquakes caused entire cities to, cr to crumble. I saw the incredible uh, changes in the prices of currency. I saw silver, not gold, but I saw silver begin to drastically uh, increase in value, not gold, but silver. Go ahead. I saw with that riots begin to break out. Major cities all over America broke out in riots. People were rioting in the streets and, and on the sign is give us our entitlements. I mean, it looked like civil war uh, within our borders, but it was all over the issue of the, the devaluing of money. And then said immediately I was caught up and I was sitting in a room uh, with world leaders. In this meeting, these world leaders were talking about how to devalue the currency of America by buying oil with another currency. And somehow or another that would drive down the value of the American dollar. You know, I don't know what it else it takes to wake people up, David, but you know, we are the we're living biblically right now in terms of these times i just want to be a voice in the wilderness you know i just like yourself i just i just want to be out there talking to people i want you that's what you're, you're doing that's why i'm with you you know you travel you go to conferences all you do is profess the word of god just to get people to understand that we are in these times that's right that's right page 19 actually i think you will appreciate david if you want to flip back to yep. that one uh this is actually amanda's prophecy this is a prophecy, I think maybe maybe last November or something she, she put out, but it's in relation to how this is supposed to play out. Key pieces of evil's plan are being exposed, you know, and that's what we're seeing right now. Key, they're starting to get exposed. And this plan will soon begin to completely fall apart, causing infighting between the plotters as they turn on one another to protect their own hides. Number two is justices will rule in God's will. Stopping evil's rebellion against God's laws. So it looks like the prophecy states that the Supreme Court is going to be forced to rule in God's will. That's going to be awesome. So let's see. But that's the, you know, prophetic. That's those are Amanda's words, you know, prophetic. The iron veil of secrecy will be pulled back and shadow governments in multiple countries, including the Vatican, will be exposed and their books open for all the world to see. Yep. So this ties in with page one, the fall. 
This is the image. The image falls. His kingdom come. His will be done. You cannot stop God's will. His will is to bring his kingdom to earth. And so it's it's starting and it's going to be glorious. It's amazing to watch us all play out, David. It is amazing. And then, you know, when you, when you put the pieces, you know, what I like to do is put the pieces together. There's much, much more in this presentation, much of which we've talked about. But that was some of the, the most um, recent information. You're asking about the stock market as well, too. Go to page 25. Okay. Uh, this discusses the Shemitah cycle. So remember, the seventh or the 50th year, both the seventh is a year of rest and the 50th year is a year of rest. In 2015, everybody was expecting a massive stock market crash and that fizzled out. Well, why? Because hindsight, you know, even I was thinking of the market crash because, hey, it's the seventh year, right? But it wasn't because it was a year of rest. But now that takes us all the way into year 2022 is the next seven years. Mm -hmm. um, I believe... The dollar is the first, that is Goliath, that is the fall. Once Goliath falls, the next thing that happens is, you know, the bond market breaks and then eventually the uh, stock market crashes. But that'll be the last thing to go, um, is the stock market. Um, and then if you look at page 26, that is the, a prophetic 124-421 cycle that, um, you know, I got in my sleep. And this has been playing out beautifully. So the next one, the crash cycle comes in and the two cycle starts, looks like in July of next year uh, into September. And that again lines up with the Alul 29 and September of next year, 2022. So those in the stock market are going to have a horrible year next year um, based on biblical timelines. Right. Is what I can say. And then beyond that, we've got some, some Bitcoin charts. We've got some uh, some silver charts. But in essence, you know, silver, uh, the, the page 30 points that it's just going to do nothing but go crazy when it breaks out. Uh, when it breaks out, it is, it's just never going to look back. And it makes sense because we're heading into his kingdom. Yeah. His kingdom is going to be a kingdom backed by his money. He's not going to use a fake monetary system. So all of this is pointing to the year of Jubilee, um, which is starting in four days from now. Uh, page one takes us back to the great fall and fall. And this will be a time that the world will never forget, David. Uh, I tell you that, um, you know, the, 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 the two worlds are about to collide and God wins. God does win. God has it and light wins. Um, this November 22nd, I believe, isn't that the, the, also the date of JFK's assassination? Yeah, you know that's right. Someone actually, I, that's a, someone actually texted me that uh, just a few days ago, and that's and I don't know that how that works out, but yeah, that's crazy. But it is. It, it actually lines up to his assassination date. So um, I don't, you know, I don't know what that means. I guess we'll find out. But um, I, I'm just telling you, um, November. Those who haven't prepared are going to be in a world of hurt by November, and, and wishing that they did. It's a time like never before, time we've, you know, that we've never seen. We can't even imagine what it means. Like, I don't know what a year, I've never lived, through, we, the nation's never lived through a jubilee like this. We're about to see the, you know, the move of God's spirit. What does that mean, David? Yeah. But I can tell you, it probably means, uh, oh, didn't Amanda have a prophecy of feast, um, of earthquakes going off uh, um, at the feast or yeah. right near or something about the feast, right? Yeah. That was a prophecy I think she said about a month ago. So does that mean this feast? I would say probably... You know, it was that one song, it starts with an earthquake. <laughs> That's right. Yep. <laughs> Maybe there's something to that. But regardless, the wealth transfer is coming, uh, financial shift, uh, the fall. The, the, the key is, is the fall. You know, this is going to be the fall of all falls. <laughs> the, the world superpower is, is going to have a bad day. That's right. But it's, it needs to have a bad day because of the bad things that they've been doing. Right. Um, but remember... All bad days come to an end. And I, I want to say this clearly. Fear not, because God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, are in complete control. Complete control. Remember, David, back on page two, this prophecy was written 2,500 years ago mm -hmm. with an end purpose. Do you think God didn't have this all planned out? It was planned, the, the end was planned out from the beginning. That's right. So for those that are in fear, well, guess what? Satan's got you. 
because he loves to kill, steal, destroy, and how he controls you is through fear. So fear not, because you have to remember God is in control of it all. David, he's got this. You know, our, our job is to pray and, and to love him and to accept him, but he's got this. And he's not going to let the United States that has a covenant, a biblical covenant That's right. with him fall for the same reason Israel has never fallen. It always comes back. That's right. But we do need to fall because without a fall, you can't be born again. Right. And there's a lot of people here, David, that are asleep. They are. I have friends, David. I'm sure you do. You know, some people do. You kind of, there's some people you grew up with. I'm sure, David, no, I have, I just, they don't get it. No. It blows my mind. They just think that this is all okay. Mm -hmm. It's the farthest thing from okay. No, it's, yeah. But it's going to be okay because <laughs> God has it. Right. But right now, are you kidding me? What's going on? And these people, you know, that are watching the news, actually paying attention to and reading the articles, like, and thinking that they're real. All I can tell you, and, you know, your viewers, David, is just, you know, have faith in the Lord because he's got us. Pray to him. Know that he's got our, he's going to protect us. Um, and he, he's, he's had this plan for, for, for centuries. Yep. And he's got it. Well, yeah. Bo, thank you once again for coming on. An hour goes by so fast when you're on. Thanks, David. Thank you. God bless you. And we're going to watch the Feast of Shofars come in. Absolutely. All God right. bless you and your family, everyone around you, David. Thank all you. Right. Thanks God for all you. you. Thanks. All right. That uh, wraps up our interview with Bo. Uh, always amazing on the time frames that uh, this continues to uh, come on. Remember, God has it, light winds, but we have to be prepared. It's time to be, uh, to be prepared. Be prepared for what is about to come. Uh, go in his shalom. God bless you. His glory followers. Thanks for your support and your love for Jesus Christ. Go to hisglory.me and click under merchandise and start shopping now. Shop for men's, women's, and kids' apparel, plus backpacks, hats, and so much more. We have styles for everyone. It's that easy. Check in daily for our newest arrivals. Get your His Glory gear today. Visit hisglory.me. His Glory app lets you connect with just one click from live TV, Bible studies, and shopping. It's great on the go for listening to interviews and catching up on the latest news. Hurry and download the His Glory app today and stay connected. His Glory app available now for iPhone, Android, Roku, and Apple TV. You're watching His Glory TV with host David Scarlett.